Okay, me too, then. Well, I, I'm going to miss your gorgeous shirt. Let me see your shirt. I love it. Let me see this. I, I love it. Looks That's nice. That's beautiful. I love it. Mm -hmm. I found matching leggings. You did? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. This is. Okay. All right, Lisa. Oh, we your uh, limited... your name badge is kind of weird. Doesn't matter. We have limited time, guys, so we need to get started. So, uh, Oh, okay. Yes, yes. So, um, <clears throat> we had a scheduling problem, so I'm in a different room and I have a shorter time period. So, I'm going to kind of rush through this and hopefully have a few minutes to answer questions. So, um, welcome to mapping out the secret space programs. And I think all of you know who I am. Uh, for the recording, I'm Penny Bradley. I'm the first officer from the German space fleet to go public. So we're going to start off with the Sonora Aero Club. And it is a group of Prussians, because Germany was not yet united then, who met in my hometown of Sonora in the 1850s. So this was before the American Civil War and after the California Gold Rush. And you have these scientists and engineers, and they're working on what will become anti-grav engines. <clears throat> and their company, that they, their agency they were working for, it was an acronym and it was NIMSA. And NIMSA was a group of what we would call military industrial complex companies. But they were mostly German and American. Now, this is important for people to understand is that the United States and Prussia were allies until Teddy Roosevelt became president. And he was the one who switched our alliance from Prussia to Great Britain. And they, I don't know the exact reason for it, but today it's still called our special relationship. So, <clears throat> these guys these guys are responsible for the sightings all across the United States from about 1880 into almost 1900 because they were just flying their ships and when they got it to where it would finally work, they flew it back to Russia. So, um, and there, the technology was turned over to the Bavarian Illuminati. And those guys are real, and they're still in existence, and at least two of them have contacted me, and they kind of thought about behavior pattern. <laughs> okay. Two of the Bavarian Illuminati subgroups took over the bulk of the work on the space project. Now, these guys were German aristocracy, so they were rich people, they were Merovingian descendants, they were mostly RH negative. The men were in the Tula Society. And this is how you say it. They actually they say it to the Gesellschaft. So <clears throat> they were mostly involved involved in the cult and engineering, and they were working on ways to get into space. And the men were in the Tula, and the women were in Phil. 
and the women in Phil were mostly mystics. Um, in those days, they actually called it a seance, but it was effectively the same thing that today we call CE5. They were deliberately making contact with extraterrestrials in the hopes of getting technology. So, <clears throat> they were the male and female of the same families and would talk over dinner. And the importance of this is Maria Orsic's father gave Schauberger her channeled designs for his repulsing engine. So it's important to know these guys talk to each other. Now, the Flow Society ended up contacting Aldebaran, the Draco, and the Shahani, otherwise known as Anunnaki. And they were given detailed plans that were drawn into blueprints to make the basic Hanabu ship. And because these women didn't want any more war, they did not attach weapons. So when the Nazi regime, I think the proper term is uh, nationalized their work, they had to spend some time figuring out how to attach weapons to a spinning ship in a way that they could be aimed at some particular thing instead of just spinning wildly. And that took the whole war. <clears throat> so, yeah. <laughs> okay. Hitler did nationalize the Illuminati efforts to go to space. Um, Maria Orsic, um, her name is spelled that way because she wasn't exactly German. She was what they called Bohemian, which is the country we today call the Czech Republic. <clears throat> and she managed to keep control of her own prototypes. So she let them nationalize copies of the blueprints, but not the originals. And how she had enough personal power to pull this off, I'm not real sure. Um, I mean, my family would have called it guns fun. But, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mom's family's Jewish, so I'm not German at all. I just served with them. Um, Daddy's family is descended from the Scottish kings, so I'm not German at all. Um, the actual space program was moved to Neuschwabenland in Antarctica because Hitler started listening to the Jesuits instead of the aristocracy. And they watched everything fall apart after that. And so they knew that Germany, the country, was going to be destroyed in this war. And so they moved there ever to someplace safe from the bombing. And they were already independent there and considered themselves free from the cabal by 1944. And the folks who went were the aristocracy. They were not part of the Nazi party, even though they may have had affiliations during the war. That was a political party that they left behind. After World War II, America got wind of the Schwabenland and sent Emerald Bird to take them out. He found them. The battle was a decisive victory for the Germans. It was over in under 30 minutes when a saucer was using an energy beam weapon and cut about the ship in half. 
And there is still dispute whether it was a German ship or a Draco ship, because they were already in alliance at that point. Uh, because the Schwabenland won, they dictated terms to America. And Truman refused to sign. It was left to Eisenhower to sign the treaty. And America is allowed the illusion of being a republic, but it's actually run by the Germans in space through a liaison officer who is the head director of the Trilateral Commission. This was David Rockefeller until his death a couple years back. And you can find out on, on the website who replaced him. And all major corporations have someone from Neuschwabenland on the board of directors. All spy agencies were to include SS, Schwarzesonne, in major positions. This last was called Operation Paperclip. Now, I know Doug Dietrich says that the Japanese won World War II and the Japanese are running this, that, and the other, but the actual evidence is the Germans did. So, before 1953, America had the Office of Strategic Services and the Office of Scientific Investigations. After the restructuring, America had the CIA and the NSA, and both had SS officers in major programs. The old War Department was changed to the Defense Department, and we have not declared war since. Every war we have been in since has been called a police action. Now, you have to wonder, why? Okay, I haven't seen the English version of this treaty. I have only been told about the German version when I was on Mars. And all of these things were part of the treaty. And Nachtwaffen is what they call their space fleet. And all the higher level officers, captain and above, are of German descent because the Germans do not trust Americans. Period. They have reasons for that, but I'm not going to say them on camera. <clears throat> Neuschwabenland has a quota of people that each country has to give them, and they take first pick of all of us who are kidnapped or otherwise recruited. The major spy agency in each country does the kidnapping, with the CIA doing it where others can't or won't, and the CIA does nearly all mind fracture. With various SS officers came various technologies. Mind control, rocketry, zero-point energies, time travel, warp drives, exotic weapons, robotics, and genetics. One of the things that the German aristocracy, Bavarian Illuminati, had been doing since the 1850s was cloning technologies. By the time of World War II, they had a complete battalion of clones. And they were fighting age. So this is not new technology. And each topic had both secret and special access ops in operations that didn't even know about each other. So they, one thing that the Germans do is they set you up in competing teams. You know you are competing against someone else in your same field. And whoever has the best production, most results, gets rewards. Now, in space, that might be extra rations at dinner. Here, it would be more, more funding for your unit. Uh, 
There's a lot of dispute about what I knew and didn't know. Uh, these were not public information items. These were things that he was so completely freaked out about that he could not handle, so he assumed that the public could not either. So, uh, on one hand, I know about the atrocities in Europe, so I'm not sure he was a, a nice guy. But I also know that he was basically a Christian and was trying to do what he thought was right by the country. And if he couldn't handle ET contact directly, he figured we couldn't either. Now, I know. He interacted with Volume 4, who was a Jahani. Okay, he interacted with Zetas. He authorized the Project Serpa, where there was an exchange of humans with for Evans. Uh, he may have even interacted with Draco as he suggested that they claim Earth and plan to terraform it. Uh, I had the Jason Society to look into the issue of terraforming. Uh, they're a think tank of some of the best and brightest in the United States. And they came up with the three alternatives. Blow a hole in the ozone lore, layer, build underground cities for the elites to survive, and go into space and build colonies. They've done all, all three. Oh, the hole in the ozone layer was not caused by hairspray. <laughs> they actually nuked the ozone layer to let pollution out. Okay. I told the CIA to do whatever it took to make, make sure some of us survived. He should never have said that. Because that took a servant agency and turned it into a slave driver. And they are now at a point where even the Congress cannot bring them in. So, my personal thing is, if the CIA ceased to exist, I would be happy. It's a rogue agency, and, it's, and in my opinion, it's more dangerous than the Draco are. Okay, Schwabenland is in charge of, not Twelfth, America, the CIA, the NSA, the U.S. Navy Space Program Solar Warden, the U.S. Air Force Program that used to be called Earth Defense Force and is now Trump's Space Force, the British Commonwealth, the Five Eyes Agencies, National military's contributions to Nazwaffen, the USSR Russian Federation, KGB, or that's been replaced by another agency, and the Russian space program. And yes, they have one. Uh, I got this online. This is the United Nations Space Security Compact. And it describes everything working together. You have NATO, you have the Russian Federation, you have the White House, you have the U.S. National Security Council, and all of these guys are answering to the Space Security Executive Officer. And below that decision-making process, you have the American intelligence community and the United States military. Hey, it's there. I didn't make that one. Okay, this graphic was made by Melinda Leslie. So, this is everything that can happen to an abductee. At any stage, you can have any or all of them happen to you. Most of us have at least five or six. 
It's kind of scary if you think about it. So if you are taken once, figure you're taking lots more than you don't remember. So the things that we go through are the ancient aliens, past life agreements, you have an ET ancestor in your family, prior UFO sightings, and a sighting contact, and then you get abducted by an ET. Maybe. I've been abducted by humans in ET costumes. Family zinners. Um, you get threats or warnings, and that can be phone calls, it can be <coughs> cryptic messages left in your mailbox, it can be uh, emails from strangers, it can be comments on your social media accounts. Uh, our community currently is having an issue with a man we know to have been former CIA, and he, there's what, Six of us in this room that I know are veterans, and we have all been harassed by this man. And there's nothing that we have been able to do because he was former CIA. So, surveillance and harassment, NIB or a government agent visit, and it's with the military. Oh, yeah, they work together. Uh, uh, we have for medical research. All, all of these things can happen. And in my experience, when I was first public, I was contacted through a friend who was channeling the CIA. And she named names and said they were going to be killed. I took her quite seriously. Contacted the people who had been threatened, said, you have been threatened. You know, this is where it came from. And I told, oh, we're big boys, we can handle this. And within six months, all of them were dead. Okay, America has chafed by being ruled by the Shabbat, having to pay tribute, and having to send their best and brightest to serve the Noctwafen and to populate the offer. World company, colonies. <sighs> Tongue doesn't work. <clears throat> so, let's help from tall white slash Nordics. By the way, these guys are blue collar Anunnaki. They're not who they are presenting themselves as. They built their own US Navy program called Solar And it's the only space fleet that has been verified by hackers. The rest of this information comes from veterans, but it was a hacker, Gary McKinnon, who came up with this name. But it was meant to take World War II back to the Germans in space. So the Germans got mad and stopped sharing things with the Americans after that. Super soldiers were an immediate design of the American Department of Defense. And if you've been reading the paper at all, in the last six months they've been talking about France having genetically modified super soldiers and China is now having them, and therefore America has to do it. They're not telling you that America's been doing it since the 1950s. So they wanted bigger, stronger, smarter, and able to live around Draco. So all six of us who have veteran status in this room have all been subjected to this. And they decided that they were having a hard time convincing the parents they wanted to get together. So they started kidnapping these parents and taking their reproductive cells and mixing them in a test tube to create a supporter. So uh, that's called Project Moonbeam. And a lot of the hybrid programs from the 70s and 80s 
more of them were Project Moonbeam than ETs. There really was a Zeta program, but it was not as pervasive as people think. It was mostly in the American military. Some of us that have the O negative and the O positive parent to make the stronger super soldiers, so they got the fast and and the um, where the O positives have more endurance than the O negative. That they put us together on purpose because my mom did not have a Rogan shot. She was O negative. Yeah, my mom didn't have the Rogan shot either, and she had five, no, six pregnancies and only lost two babies. And she didn't have the program shot, and none of us are none of us that are living are, are retarded. We do have small deformities, like weirded out toes and ears, and um, one sister one sister had a double set of teeth all in one row, and the dentist pulled out half of them so that she could eat. So there are little things that give us away. What they were doing is RH negatives have a higher metagene and the RH positives have more endurance. So they were hoping to combine those into one individual. Um, for most of these programs, super soldiers are Kruger or Monarch and the rest of us are SSP. And the difference being that Kruger and Monarch both set up their people to be military. They don't teach them anything other than what they need to know for their job. And so you've got a brainwashed soldier that's into yeehaw. They are all gung ho into the guts and glory. So they're, they have a different attitude. The people that were SSP, we're tired of, of killing. We're tired of the blood. We don't see any glory in it. We think the whole system is in need of being shut down. So, kind of that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the Kruger and Monarch were started by SS doctors in the CIA who were doing mind fracturing and they decided, oh, we can make money off this. We can, we can buy altars and tissue samples and we can create our own super soldiers out of these people that were already mind fracturing to give to the Germans. And so, we're already being in one program, and then we're added to a second program. Uh, they often sell their services to competing sides in wars. So we have humans fighting on both sides of ET wars that we have nothing to do with. And when they come back to Earth, they have programming to hate each other. Each side says the other one is the devil. And, okay, they, they grow a clone, and before it has a chance to, they rush the development of the body. If they left it alone, every clone would be your identical twin. They would have a mind and soul of their own. But what they do is they rush the development of the body so you have a pre-born child's mind in there. And it takes about 20 years for that mind to develop strength enough to push you out. What the, and it's the Americans that are doing this. The Germans don't. Okay? So what we are doing is de facto we are possessing our sibling. There is no moral ground to defend this. So 
And the way they end the service is to kill this clump so that then the asset possessing the body returns to their own <coughs> actual body. That's another term, Penny, for twin brain, but I'm going to talk about it in the case. Okay. Who's in the original body? It's sitting there in stasis. It's still there. It's just sitting there in stasis, waiting for you to come back to it. When, when the clone body that you're possessing is killed, you will return to your natural body. So if you're um, if you're take, if you're taken and then when you come back, is there a time lapse um, of like minutes or seconds when you return to your body after the twenty? Because I know you have no recollection of it. They try to erase the memory before they kill the clone. Okay, so say like um, when you wake up from that sleep and you've been gone for the twenty, but it's really to you it's an overnight. You know, yeah. Is there a minute? Or uh, maybe 15 minutes or not? There's, there's a 15 minute window. Okay. For all of them, for the inductions. Is that 15 minutes or does it vary? It varies. They're trying to get it down to one team is leaving with you and the next team is coming back with you. Do you I'm sorry, Justin, I'm going to Do you know that, um, is there a maximum? Of, like 43 minutes or? The maximum amount of time was three hours, and that was because someone was refusing to come back and do a fit. <laughs> and it, it was at a point where it interfered in the process. But they found that if they can get the Take and return time difference short enough that your mind here, your brain won't register that you were gone. And that's what they're wanting. They don't want us to remember this. Can I, can I ask you one more thing? I'm sorry. I only have 50 okay, minutes. Fine. Sorry, I'll ask you. We, we had to reschedule because there was a, there was a room left out. So. And these, okay, planetary corporations. This is a group that everybody that comes from it calls it something else. It is the military industrial complex, their personal space program. And the Germans call it Bakers in Space. And if you know anything about real German history, you will know that that is like spitting at someone. So, um, one person calls them ICC, another person calls them planetary corporations, and she was the first one who talked, who came from them, so I use her terminology. Another one calls them the Alliance. They are all the same group. Now, why do they keep changing their name? No, the name is LLC. It's Lunar and it's Corpus. Yeah, they've got, they've got all these names. And it's the same military industrial complex. And they are the folks who have the cyborg factory on, Mar on Mars and on Pluto, and they are putting out a minimum of 100,000 cyborgs a year made out of us, humans on Earth. Um, but they have a kind of a loose confederation with no real permanent leadership. They're just driven by profits, and they do a lot of infighting. And if you are familiar with the Star Trek world, the Ferengi are based on them. They are responsible for the worst of the atrocities in space. They kidnap civilians from Earth, not related to the other programs, and convert them into cyborgs for sale to ETs for ever more advanced tech. But the truth is, they're only being sold the equivalent of children's toys. 
because we're a primitive race, they're not allowed to sell us anything important. So they are literally selling humanity for chain slaves. And when they turn you into a cyborg, they only use about this big of a chunk of your brain that contains your pineal gland because the cyborg is required to have a consciousness to operate the machinery. So the rest of it, they sell to different carnivore races for food. So these people are selling the homeless or refugees, revived cancer patients, uh, the children that, that don't survive the sex trade, that's what they're doing to them. And they find us, the veterans, at the time of our death and put our consciousness, our soul, into a metallic um, magnetic bottle and it's usually about this big. And they store us, and they have to tissue samples to bring us back. They can bring us, as long as they have that magnetic trap, when we die, they can keep us forever. Now, if they store us for under a month, we still have no idea who we are, and they don't have to retrain us. But if they go like six months, they have a fresh mind. Yes, they have to retrain you, but they already know what you're capable of, so they, they know what to train you for, and you don't have any memory of your family on Earth or anyone else. You're a complete blank slate. So, this is worth lots to them. You know? They want complete secrecy in what's going on here. So, um, I know that, I believe it's three years ago, that the Nakhtafen forces found Planetary Corporation's archive of stored veterans and blew it up. They freed all those souls. So, whatever else they may do, they, they did release the dead. And in my case, I've been told I will not be allowed to die, that I am going to be theirs forever. They also told me that they knew I was talking and to tell the good with the bad. This is a graphic that I did. Yeah, I used Melinda's basic idea, modified it. This is how we are taken. Your lab created embryo is implanted in the mother that you may or may not be related to. You're born. Your first abduction by the CIA is for trauma based lung fracture, weaponization, and first service. And you go out on this side loop, which is actually still in this timeline. And you go, and at the end of the time, you come back to when you were taken. And you may or may not remember that. And you're then abducted by another agency who wants intel on what you did while you were taken the first time. And those are usually within an hour of each other, real time. And then you take it again, and again, and again. Now you notice the places at the end where I have these marks. That's when the mission is over in your Earth life. 
those are weak points where it's easier to remember what you did on your mission. Okay, so you're going along. All right, my original mission was over in 2014. The NSA activated my memory of it in 2013 because I was reaching that weak point where it's going to be easier. So, I have 90 altars and on 60 in bats from the fall of 2018, and I really hope I'm not still around when they're done. But this is how the loop system works. You're out, and yes, you are bi-located all of these times. It's still you, you experience it in a linear fashion. You go, you come back. You go, you come back. That's how we experience it. But we are actually bi-located in the same timeline each and every time you're taking. There are only two main timelines. This one and the ones where the Germans won World War II. That's it. The rest of it is people's fantasies. Now, <clears throat> The NSA has its own collection of things. ACIO is part of the NSA. It is the agency that keeps the records of all of us who interact with any ET. Uh, they keep files and files and files and files. They know. They also know what each of us is used for, and they know what our abilities are, and kind of decide which, which direction we're going to be used. And they work with pretty much every ET that, that humans have contact with. The labyrinth group is made up of the people who have psychic interaction or physical interaction with the ETs. So, I know several people, um, Michael Lee Hill, uh, Karen Christine Patrick, who have worked in Labyrinth Group. And they were used for long range interaction with the Shahami, aka Anunnaki. Uh, we already Covered that. This is a graphic I got from Michael Lee Hill about the relationships U.S. government, the NSA. This is an acknowledged special level one, is special projects lab, the military industrial complex, ICC, uh, and select privacy industry. And at knowledge level two, you get 15, who was the director of the ACIO. And then, and then you get that knowledge level number three, which is the same 15 director, and he's over in Labyrinth group as well. So we've got a coordinated system here between all of the NSA agencies, and even though they don't talk to each other a lot, they share a lot of same bosses. And he was qualified to write this up because he did work with the Labyrinth group. And this is my map. My. Okay, you have the CIA here in the middle. Because they mind pressure all of us. From the, the CIA, they send the records to the ACIO, who is part of the NSA. 
that the Lamech group was there. The Lamech group works with the Shahami, who are the Anunnaki, tall whites slash Nordics, who are blue collar Anunnaki, various reptilians, and there are probably a million races of reptilians in our arm of the galaxy and they are not related to each other and only 12 of them eat people. So don't hate on all of them. Then we've got grays. There are a thousand races of grays. One of them, the Zeta-Particuli, process they, you, they apply their food to their skin, and then they put it back out again on their skin, and they stink. They stink really, really, really bad, and humans are known to be stinky to other ETs, but we got so fed up with the Zeta reticuli that we started using cleaning chemicals on them, and found out it made them drunk. And then there's the Drago, who generally don't interact with humans. Because they are aware that if one of them popped in here, that the only people that would be alive in a half hour are those who were genetically modified to be around them. Their energy field is so intense that it fries your nervous system. So, all of the hands-on stuff from ETs that you find on the Earth is from Zeta Reticuli and various forms of Anunnaki. So, we have Nachtrafen, who are the Germans, and they deal with Drago, Grays, and Reptilians. So, and they do some trade with planetary corporations, but they're currently at war. So, when you start hearing stuff about some group that's at war with the Germans in space and how they're capturing defecting Germans, what they're actually doing is they're killing the Germans. They're they're taking out the black goo and the implants and then planting their own chips, etc., into these people and then reviving them. This is not a defection. This is a capture and enslavement. And then you have the mercenary companies here at the bottom, Kruger and Monarch. And the main difference between them is Monarch shoots up their people with black goo. Kruger will chop up your arm and replace it with a gun. Or a sword. Or a sword. You'll be so covered with enhancements that you look like a board. Now, over on this side, you have the, the American military. All of the American programs in space are controlled by the Navy. The only one that's controlled by anybody else used to be called the Defense Force and now it's called Space Force. Naval Intelligence. Naval Intelligence runs solo boarding, it runs the Space Marines, it runs, I guess, Jason Rice called it Idors. How come they got a uh, hand over Air Force? Um, they didn't turn everything over the air force. Because sub submersives in the ocean? Uh, what they did was um, the head of the whole military at the time I started this was from the Navy. Oh, yeah. And the excuse was we had an air force officer, he was 95. Goes home to his wife and kids. You're right. Navy, he's on the ship. The Navy, even the officers, will go down on the ship to save everybody else. <clears throat> and if you're out in space, who 
you weren't in charge of your ship. So they chose the Navy. Oh. So because the other guys are asleep. The other guys are sleeping. The Navy, it doesn't matter who it is. If your compartment is, is flooding, you shut the, the dials even if you have this. Even if you have to drown, you save the rest of the ship. And that's what they wanted, the spaceships. So, um... Randy Creator's group comes off of here. So did Jason Rice. Uh, so does Corey Good, if you can believe his story. Um, most of the whistleblowers from SSP worked under the U.S. Navy. Most of the super soldiers who are currently public are from Kruger. So, um, that's the big difference. Who runs Kruger? Uh, a SS officer who worked for the CIA. Wow. I understand his name is actually Dr. Kruger. The other one is a Dr. Serene, who was also an SS officer. Who I mean, what department? CIA. Oh, CIA. CIA. So, it, it's, it can be... What's the project about? I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just want to, for Facebook Live, we get uh, a few points and I leave. Well, I'm getting close to the end of my time. Sorry. Okay, I, I can go 10 minutes. Okay, what it is... One minute Kruger. <laughs> One minute Kruger. Kruger is a mercenary company that that uses kidnapped, mind fractured people to fight wars in space for their benefit. And the actual assets gain nothing. They are promised that if they do a 20 year tour, that they'll have half a million dollars when they get out, and that's a lie. And they are not taught while they're out there anything other than their personal job which they're usually pretty good at. They're highly enhanced. Uh, they're competitive with a lot of the ET soldiers out there. Competitive. So... Why uh, can they be? They're so little compared to Naval or Air Force and stuff. Few guys versus thousands. They have things like... Money. An exoskeleton that will make a normal-sized human about 20 feet tall. Yes. You're like, you know, you're sitting in the middle of this, this machine, and you're running it, and it becomes an extension of who you are. Oh, okay. And robotics. It's robotics, and instead of having a hand to grasp space, you have a weapon there. And these are not... We're not talking about a very high six. We're talking about major, major laser type weapons. Heavier stuff. Heavier stuff. They, if one showed up in your town, they can blow up a million people. They can blow up millions of people. Yeah, now I guess. And this is what the standard Department of Defense is wanting to bring to Earth for the American military. They're claiming that the Chinese already have it. Where, where in the space they're operating, Kruger? Okay, Earth is in the Orion Spur, and they're operating all of the Orion Spur and probably 10% into both edges of Sagittarius on. So they have quite a range. The, the, uh, the Air Force uh, or these guys, their UFOs, IFOs, do they go out of the solar system or not? Space Force does not. Solar Warden does. Um, the group I was in, we had colonies outside the Milky Way. So, okay. thank you so much. They're like, 
it's not just interstellar, we're talking intergalactic travel. Nice. So, um, yeah, I have altars that I remember from Nachtwafi and from Kruger, and one altar worked for Mark. You said what? One altar worked for Mark. Or Mark. Um, most of the original monarch assets were sex slaves and, and almost, well, every, in my generation at least, every one of us had been equipped with a set of sex slave altars. Yeah, stolen kids who greet them for operation. Yeah. Underground. Well, they weren't just doing that, they were using us for their own entertainment. Really? And they were taking a dream chrome from us and then putting us in regeneration. How old were you? Were? I was four when they took me. How much? Four. Four years old, wow. Four years old. Yeah, the little girls are very interested. Yeah, they're very interested in all that. Um, that's part of why I keep my my channel is you, also my... You heard about Order of Fleas? Order of who? Fleas in Europe. Yeah. They, they grow these little girls like queens and... And uh, it, it's an underground, heavy uh, European, high-end, rich people who become their members. We just came across them in our There's, research. And they're running a lot of world... Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. There's... <clears throat> something similar in every country on the planet. It's not just a European problem, it's not just an American problem. It's, it's a reptilian uh, it's, blood, blood sucking. It seems to be about 15% of the population is involved in some level of pedophilia. Wow. And some of it is they just like to look, and it can go all the way to enjoy killing the child. I, I heard their leaders are in France, they're part of France, Chardonnay or something. They get those big wines and they own a lot of land and money and they run the operations. But that's something. I don't know much about the, the actual who, who wins what. Any question on your chart? Where does the new space force fit it in? It replaces their defense force. Oh. How active are they now? As far as you know. Well, they're operating what used to be called Reagan's Star Wars defense system, which was a lot more expensive than people thought. It's um, they have orbiting weapons platforms, they have manned satellites, they with a crew of two to four people, and they they shuttle them back and forth every six months or so. Uh, they have weapons that are meant for planetary defense, and if they're used on a on an enemy on the world, they can destroy an entire city. Um, the scalar wave uh, energy? There's scalar waves, there's a mini black hole there that makes a movie look like trans flag. There are there are multiple warhead and there are laser weapons and there are laser weapons will hit anything in orbit beyond the moon, and those are meant to take out like an asteroid heading planet. I see. So these these are not toys. How many uh, uh, alien races were fighting? Two? They want to kill us to destroy the Earth? You hear that? No? <clears throat> The alien races that I've interacted with should all be treated as used car salesmen. Uh. Find out what they want before you talk. Because they have demands. They have things that they want. Minerals and 
and biogenetics and water and food. Oh, water. Water and food are major items. Why do we need food? Aliens don't eat food. Who told you that? What kind of food they eat? Some eat plants, some some eat animals, some eat us, not many though. I I've only interacted with about a dozen that actually eat humans. I'm, I'm talking to them, sorry. Can I ask a quick question? Uh, what, are you retired now? Do they still come and get you in an astral plane? Or are you, like, where are you at? They still come and get me physically. 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 And they sometimes leave me with physical injuries that require surgery. I had a surgery a year and a half ago to rebuild my shoulder because they were mad that I had the integrated and alternative dead navigation. This is real 3D physical interactions. Uh, the people who are only have the astral, I know it's just as, as traumatic, but the majority of our veterans, and we had six of them in the room that I knew of, we are being taken physically. So the gentleman you're with, if you go miss for, missing for a day or two, he would be able to say, yeah, she was missing for a day or two. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. I haven't been taken where I was missing that long. I'm normally only missing 15 minutes. Okay. So I can be gone for 60 years, but I'm only missing for 15. I got you. That's how it works. Okay. That's how it works. I have... Since you came back in, this is how it works. Yeah, and read them, Penny. We can't, I can't even read them from here. Okay. The print's too small. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. You start off as a lab created embryo that's inserted into a mother, and it may not be your actual mother. Nine months, well, ten months later, most of us are ten month babies, you're born. And when you reach a maturity level that they think you're ready to be mind fraction, they take you and they take you for a mind fraction of you, they train you for your first mission and you send your first mission out and it is it can be 20 years, it can be 40 years, it can be 60 years. My first one was 55. And then they bring you back to within 15 minutes of when you were first taken. And usually, about an hour later, the NSA shows up. They want to interrogate you, find out what you were used for. And they take you for however long they want, and they bring you back. And sometimes you'll be picked up by another country's agency wanting to know the same information. So you may be taken five, six, seven times in a night. So you're currently getting visited by these agencies after you've been taken? Right? Yes. Okay. Within the last year? Yes. Okay, interesting. So. And why don't, no offense, but why don't they just kill you for telling us all these things? Why do they let you live? Because I'm a navigator. It's a very rare ability. And it means that no matter what I do here, they won't kill me. They will kill everyone around me instead. So they punish you yes. like they injured you is how they're just kind of faking you in a sense that they don't yes. want to kill you. They just want to make you feel sane so maybe you won't talk so much. So obviously um, that's not happening. That Breaking my shoulder was because I reintegrated an altar that was a navigator. I cost them money. <clears throat> so you have to understand to them, we are not people. We are assets, which means the same as we're trucks or screwdrivers or wrenches. Livestock. Livestock, yeah. We're, we're, we don't even rate as livestock because they don't take care of us here. They just can't kill us because then they lose their asset. 
And they have this mindset of they will use the same tool over and over and over until it can no longer be fixed. And if you are, okay, it's an army out there. If you're the guy that is guarding the spaceship, yeah, you have a function, but they're not going to put you through the same paces as someone who can take an armada into hyperspace and bring them all out with nobody stuck in a wall. Okay, I have a specialty skill that makes me where I'm never going to be free. I have been told point blank, oh, we know you're not feeling real well, so when we know you've died, we're going to time travel back, they call it retelephoning, and we're going to get you just before you die, and we'll put you through, through regeneration, and we'll take you to Mars, and you'll live there because we can't have a dead person coming back on Earth. Well, couldn't they, couldn't they clone you, though, and keep you living forever through a clone and transfer your consciousness and your skills, or does it not work that way? Clones break down. Clones break down after 20 years. If they keep me in this body, they can keep me until regeneration stops working. And once they have control of this physical body on Mars, nobody else can take me either. I will be just theirs. And because I'm chipped into ship's computers, I'm a security leak. Anyone who has a real deep telepathic connection with me can access that ship's computer. So it's not like I'm a normal veteran. I'm in this subcategory. Now, out of the people who have gone public, a lot of us are navigators. But you have to realize there are millions of people taken. It's 150,000 Americans are taken every year for the Germans alone. And they started in the 1950s. Do the math. So it's, at this point, we're talking almost 70 years of 150,000 Americans. And I know they're also taking Australians and Canadians and New Zealanders and people from Brazil and people from Russia, Mexico. There are millions of us who just don't remember yet. They never meant for any of us to remember. So those of us who do, we're the failures. The failures of their mind wipe techniques. Was there a specific event that occurred that caused you to kind of wake up? You said like real. Yeah, I was I was the su subject of an NSA operation. They deliberately restored my memory. Oh. And they were both killed before they told me why. So I have no idea why exactly. Well, Penny, with your free will as an Earth human. Can you object to being taken off planet to Mars, as you said, right before you die? Why can't you just say, hey, I'm a sovereign being and I wish to be left alone? Because they don't care. They don't care. They don't care. You don't have free will when once they consider that they genetically modified me before I was born, so they do not consider me a human. I am not considered to be someone they have to respect my free will. I am completely a property. Well, that sucks for you then. I mean, yeah. where's the, you must have a way out. Uh, the way out that I have found and chose to keep in reserve, uh, I've been dead seven times on Earth. And on one of these trips, I found the black hole at the center of the universe and went back through the other direction. 
and chose to come back because I was in the middle of something I wanted to finish. And um, when it's time, that is the route I will take. And then I will no longer be in this universe and they will not be able to find me. Even if they revive the body, it won't be in it. Have, have, have people come in, this, in these rooms in the last few days that you recognize that maybe have come to you and said, in their own way that you know what they don't want you doing what you're doing. In other words, there, is there somebody here and maybe in this room right now that's that you can <laughs> you're not gonna point them out probably, but you know what I'm saying? Or is, Surround them. Are you being this watched? Is, this is one of the rare times that I have had a wonderful experience. No one has told me I needed exorcism, no one has warned me off, no one has threatened me. So I, I've been having a pretty good time this, good. this trip. Amazing. But in the past, I have had agents contact me. Uh, the last time I was at 5D events, there were two tall whites in the audience, and they each cornered me separately to pick my brain. That was that was tricky because they're in, in this disguise and I recognize what they are. My partner recognized what they were. And they talked to him too. And we were like, I know who you are, yes. <laughs> now these the same tall whites are what do you think how do you feel about Charles Hall's story who talks about the tall whites in the sixties? I think that the tall whites are real. I think they are blue collar and monkey. They were, my understanding is they were on a mining colony that was attacked by Draco for not paying their taxes. And that they are suffering genetic damage from that attack. And because the Anunnaki homeworld has so many problems of its own, they've basically been abandoned. They have a city on Mars in the southern hemisphere it has 10 million of them in an underground city. They also have bases in Area 54, Area 51, uh, Tanzania, Puerto Rico, and Pine Gap, Australia. And those are the ones I know about. Where is the colony of 100,000? Can you give a location? Um, the colony on Mars? You said a col I thought you were going to say somewhere here on Earth. No, the, the one on Mars is in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, I can find it on the map, but I, I don't know how to tell people. I just sort of, okay, it's there. <laughs> so let me ask you, is anything NASA is doing real, or how much of it is fake? Because obviously some of it's fake, if not most of it. I don't know. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? NASA was designed to be cover for the real space program to let the people think they were doing something. And like any other PSYOP, there had to be enough truth to make it feel real. Were you taken as a child, and do they, these 150,000 Americans they want each year, or do they want children or any age? They want children because adults tend to freak out when they see any teen. I mean, that, that's the truth. And what age were you when they first took you? They first took me when I was four, and the CIA spent two years mind fracturing me, and then they sent me to Montauk for six months. And in the, in the 1960s, it was boys and girls. By the 1980s, it was just boys. Um, but they wanted to find out what we were capable of doing in the chair. And that's where they discovered that I could go hyperdimensional and take physical objects with me. And I was doing it in conjunction with the chair. And in the space program, I do it in conjunction with the ship's computer. So me, myself, on Earth, I can go hyperdimensional, but I can't take stuff with me. So... Um, I have a lot, a lot of limits here that I don't have there. I'm behind a firewall here, 
I, well, except for telepathy, I have to believe that my life is in danger or the life of someone I care about is in danger or I can't access the abilities. So uh, that was kind of their way of making sure I didn't kill anybody. Uh, there have been times that I've deliberately worked myself into a fear state so that I could access them. Uh, I didn't kill anybody, <laughs> but it was, it was more abstract defense mode rather than actual physically in danger at the moment. In, in Earth esoteric terms, it would be defensive magic. So, uh, the psionics in space is like a cross between what y'all call psychic and real magic, and there's a science to it. It's not an art. You have to have a genetic component, and when you have that, you have the ability, and they just teach you how to use it. But they're not real nice about how they teach it. Well, so if they've been rescuing these 150,000... Rescuing? I meant taking. No, they're kidnapping kids from their beds and taking them to various bases throughout the world and they're traumatizing them to form memory bubbles that become altars. And then once you have the required number of altars, they start training the altar for the job that will be assigned to it. And that, the entire process was five years when I was there. And when they finished that, they sent me to the Germans on Mars, who were actually really good to me. I mean, this is a point that I keep making, but it just goes, people don't hear it. I went to Mars. I was a traumatized child. I barely spoke English, could not read or write in any language, and I had some pretty scary skills. And they put me in Shula with their own kids and taught me. And in the 10 years that they had me in Shula, I ended up with the equivalent of a bachelor's degree before they ever once put me into battle. These people treated me well. And I think that's a point that people need to understand. I'm not joking. My father's family, we're descended from Scottish royals. My mother's family, I'm Jewish. I'm not German at all. I'm telling my experience was these people treated me well. But they have this cultural thing. If they find something that drives you nuts, they'll keep picking at it. And so they called me a miscavert, which is a portion that lived, because I was modified with Draco DNA. They didn't care I was Jewish. That's why I keep saying they're not Nazis out there. They don't care about your race. If you're human, you're human. But if you're a hybrid, they'll tease you forever. So they're not Nazis as they were on Earth. The Nazi party was a political group that lasted 20 years and it's dead and gone. The people in space are just Germans. Isn't it forthright though? Or a version of that? It, it, was, it was a cultural basis on it, but it wasn't. They basically reverted to the Teutonic tribal system. Well, that's part of the whole Reich the, well, of a thousand years. I, no, it wasn't the same mindset. It was different people in charge with different goals. Their goal was not to reunite the German-speaking countries, which was what the Third, the third Reich wanted. Their goal was to finally be free from the Vatican and the bankers. Mm. 
And that was their, that's what they told me out there was that that was their entire intention was to be finally free from 1,500 years of genocide at the hands of the Vatican and the bankers. And if you look at real history instead of propaganda, you'll see they were telling the truth. Right. But they lost the European countries in World War II. Yeah. Then they went to Antarctica, South America, and off planet. Uh -huh. And that could be collectively thought of as a, the Fourth Reich. Because they do still believe in the, the German people and... Well, you believe in the American people, don't you? Sure. So what? what's so wrong about them believing in their own? Not at all. I'm just saying... <laughs> I right. mean, it's really, important. seriously. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We're now in the American Empire. Do you still get... Do you, do you support that? Or are you still a uh, member of the Republic? So, so, no, we agree on the same thing. I'm just saying that yeah. the, the realm of the Fourth Reich can live on in uh, philosophical or even political ways. Yeah. Maybe it's more of an earthly thing than off-planet, though. Well, unfortunately, she needs to wrap it up. Hey, I don't